Good whatever it is, morning, afternoon, or evening. Or maybe you're sleeping right now. I hope not, because we're about to go through another Paragon practice cast. Here we go. It is the number one time to play some Paragon right now. <coughs> so let's just get it on and try to do it. Of course, you got Piffy and Legume here on the mic. This was a game requested by Faded Miracle. He's going to be playing the Countess on the mid lane for the Dawn side. Gonna round out that squad. We've got Faye playing the support role. This can be Lord Pharonix. Tom Bonebreaker, we playing the Serith out of the jungle. Rotten Rainbow, can be playing the Soul Lane Aurora. And then finally Dynich will be handling the Sparrow here for the Dawn side. Now for the Dusk, we've got Devil Shorn01 playing a Gravestone. Elio Smart 128. He's gonna be headed up against the Countess as the Gideon. Well, yes, 36 will be playing the Steel. We've got Zerdo 11 He's going to be handling the Revenant. And then finally, out of the jungle for the Dusk side, it's going to be J Sara 11 bringing out that Chimera. So it looks like we already have a bit of aggression over on the duo lane with the Dawn side getting a lot of aggression out there. The Fae can allow for this since she does have that nice and easy poke with the Nettles. We'll see how the Dusk side are able to handle it, but she's already getting a lot of harass down, and they have to be worried about this because you do have a lot of long range engage between the Sparrow and the Fae, so this should be a pretty good combo to get going. And if you can keep the levels down on the Steel in the early game, I definitely think that the Dawn side are going to have a much easier time in this game since he just won't be able to get that Steel Sim early at all. So you see him already being forced to back here. This is going to give some easy levels to the Revenant, but he's going to have to be care careful of his life here. Has to make sure that he doesn't fall because that would be extremely counterproductive for the Dusk side. Being underneath this tower up against two fairly squishy heroes, he doesn't have to worry too much. Just has to defend his tower a little bit here and make sure he doesn't take any unnecessary damage. Let's take a look at this mid lane matchup. Gideon versus Countess. You can see pretty much every single time that Faded Miracle goes for the Shadow Slip onto the minions here. The Gideon has pretty much a free rock or a cosmic rift to drop down. So as a Countess in this kind of matchup, I would say it's very, well, it's probably less difficult with the last hitting change now to actually get the farm on in the mid lane. But you just have to be very careful with when you're using that Shadow Slip. Because as soon as that's down, it's going to be an instant engage for the enemy. And a pretty free trip for some, a pretty free trip for some rocks. See a lot of action going on in the duo lane so far. Seraph does pick up the purple buff now. Is there going to be anything coming out of this one? Faded Miracle has done a good job of manning his, managing his HP. If we take a quick look at the cards. The Countess has gone with the... Fountain of Experience instead of the Advanced Evolution. In any case, she's going to go right on in, take out the Revenant. Steel will be able to find the kill, but that Blade Siphon might allow Faded Miracle to secure another one here. With the rest of his team, we've got Tom Bone Breaker also coming around the side with the Th Serith Shadow Plane buff, and they'll be able to pick up the Twofer over on the Duo. They did actually lose the Sparrow in the middle of that, so it's not really the best kind of trade. For the Dawn side, but they did manage to get two kills out of it. So you would probably prefer that your Sparrow doesn't die there, but it's a perfectly fine engagement. At least you get the whole team in there. You get the whole party. So I'm a big fan of parties. You get parties happening here in Paragon, you're probably going to have a good time, even if you don't win. So I like that Dawn side are partying early. Seraph does a pretty good job of completely pushing the mid lane here for the Countess. And being a melee here, you can see that Faded Miracle is basically forced to just stay back away from the Gideon and not really be too effective at all. You see Gideon's also already at level 5, even though Faded Miracle did get the early gank off. And you can see that Gideon's having a bit of a difficult time actually hitting any of the minions here. We do have a wraparound onto the duo. JSR is here with the green buff. It should be a pretty good engagement. We'll see what the steel can do. Dynage over to the side. Okay, they seem to have disengaged pretty well, but the Fae is going to be rather unlucky here. Sparrow tries to help out as much as possible, but they're going to get the leap. They're going to get the bunk, and they mark him in. Probably going to get the kill. Yeah, a little bit of a misstep with the obliterate, but it was more than enough damage to get the Fae down there. Now Sparrow wants to try to respond with some pretty good damage onto the steel, but she has to be careful herself. Leap comes in from JSR, but he's underneath the tower. You do not want to sit there at all. Zer will sit underneath the Hail of Arrows for a little bit. 
Both will be perfectly fine here. They may try to get some kind of push on the tower, but I would say with the HPs right now, they need to be a little bit more careful than that. Fade Miracle, with the timing, will get the blue buff and uses that move speed to go over and pick up the ampli amplification buff as well. Out of the river. She wants to get some kind of pressure onto this one. Has level 5 up against JSR. Is she going to use the feast? There we go. Fade Miracle going ham. Is it going to be enough? Another Blade Siphon. Another Dark Tide. That looks like she really doesn't even need any of it as it just comes off cooldown. You can see all that HP regenerating as well. That's going to take her to level 6. Gets Faded Miracle. How many kills does he got right now? He's up to 3 kills with 28 minions. Which is even ahead of the getting, even though the Countess has been spending time in a lot of different lanes. So that fun of experience should be able to make sure that the Countess continues to have access to the HP while that gold comes flowing in from the kills. Pretty good early game for the Countess here. And really we see the Dawn side, they are getting a lot more teamwork on the map right now. And you know what they say, teamwork makes the dream work. I have no idea if anybody says that, but it definitely sounds good. Gideon with the rotation over to Rotten Rainbow. It's going to be difficult to take down this Aurora. He goes right on in, misses the first rock. They'll jump for the kill. Rotten Rainbow will use the Glacier. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Gideon doesn't realize that you can't actually do damage to Aurora when you're only hitting her Frozen Simulacrum. So, uh, yeah, he just wasted his first black hole. Uh, that just happened. Now we'll see if Sarath can get any kind of retribution here, any kind of response. There's Tom Bonebreaker starting with the Chastise onto Divish. They're going to keep on going for this one, but they just really don't have a whole lot of range for it. Rotten Rainbow goes underneath the tower. We'll use the Frozen Simulacrum to get out, and that'll take up the damage for a little bit. They'll go into the... Oh, ooh, is it going to be enough? They pop the Reforged on Divish. Tom Bone Breaker still wants to go for it. Uses the Heaven's Fury again, but I'm just not really seeing it. Yeah, she used the her Heresy there, but unfortunately, Greystone's just a bit too close to his tower. Did you pop the first Reforged? Meme on the duo lane. Well, yes. Does that shield save him? I think it does. Lord Farah wants to go underneath the tower. Does. Takes a little bit of a hit. As a result, but the steel still manages to get out. So we're still going through the early game. Chimera's taking the place of the Gideon on the mid lane for now. If we take a look at the minion kills, it's pretty firmly in favor of the Dawn side, and we have a about a 2,500 gold lead on their side as well. Lots of rotations to mid. Tom Bonebreaker is here, but Jay Sara, he sees the face show up, and that's a pretty easy sign for the Chimera to say, okay. It's time for me to back up right now. Or not. He's going to go in for the leap. That seemed pretty ill-advised. Dark Tide's going to be there. Hasn't used the Shadow Slip yet, I believe. But they don't really need it. Heaven's Fury is going to be enough to take the kill. And I have no idea what that Chimera was doing. He decided that it was time to fight. But it was truly not time to fight. There we go. So the Fae will make her way back over to the dual lane. Maybe get some harass onto a Revenant, but Steel is coming from the backside. Is he level 5? No, he's just level 4. So he doesn't have the shield slam here, but Dynich is really far up here. Is this really the right position for a Sparrow to be in? That Gross is going to do some damage, but the Obliterate does even more. Lord Pharaonic still wants to get the kill on the Revenant, but that big fat shield is in the way from the Steel. That's going to allow the Revenant, the Edge Lord, to stay alive here. I don't know. Has he actually died here? At all? Yeah, he's died once. Only on 28 minion kills, too. Surprisingly low for a Revenant in the duo lane, who's really not doing all that bad. Just one death to his name at this point. There's a Heresy. Trying to get the Gravestone. I don't believe his ultimate is up. His shield doesn't seem to be glowing. He's going to get cornered and try to jump to the high ground, but it doesn't work anymore. He's going to be lagging his way out of this one. The Ascend will not hit. And the Greystone is going to keep on making his way out of here. Does he actually manage to get the hell out of dodge? Doesn't pick up the Aqua buff because it's not there. <laughs> oh, wings in the face from Tom Bone Breaker. That's going to secure the kill. And they'll take advantage of the fact that the Reforged was still down. Rotten Rainbow, he's possibly looking for the 
cryosism pretty soon. He's just sitting there on the mid lane. Fading Miracle, though, he's coming in from the side. Dark Tide misses, as does that Venus flytrap. That could have been a good opportunity, but they have to watch out here because there are two members of the Dawn side still coming in. Shield Sam's available from Lil Yes, might be able to create a little bit of space for them, but will it be enough? We'll have to see. Three members from the Dawn side here, and the harass starts up from the Fey. They may want to go in. Here comes Rotten Rainbow going in for the Cryo. She seems to be around everything. Just walk through the tower range, waiting for the minions to show up. You have to be using that cryosism soon. Shield Slam goes out onto the Aurora, and she's not going to be able to get away. There are going to be a couple of arrows heading for Steel, but man, the Seraph really wants to try to take down the Revenant. Goes for the Ascend, but she's just not going to be there in time. Gideon, coming around the side, is going to run right smack dab into a Seraph. Pops down that black hole. Will it be enough? Oh yeah, definitely will with that Revenant damage coming in from the side. They'll go one for one, Sparrow for Gideon. Now we've got Seraph versus a Revenant. It's going to be difficult for the Revenant to back away from this one, but it's okay because here comes Chimera. Can he help this fight enough? He's going to slow down the Seraph and Greystone gets into it as well. Gets the leap in there. But I don't know if they can continue to chase this. Chimera really has to get in range for his leap. And Faded Miracle goes right to the back lines. And he's going to get the Dark Tide right on top of the Revenant. Going to punish him for trying to pursue that one. Divish really wants to go for this battle. He should have his Reforged up at this point. But here comes the backstab from Faded Miracle. Still has that buff going. It's a black buff. So she can be extra sticky to the Dusk side. But Lil Yes is going to show up. Which makes it difficult for Dawn to try to... Engage here. Sparrow getting into the fight. Dark Tide goes out into Divish. He's going to have to think twice about getting into the fight pretty soon. Dynage up on the high ground, trying to get those arrows off, but he's just shooting the ground in front of them. Not really the most effective strategy, but he does put a halo arrows down in the mid lane, zoning out and continuing to make it so that the Dusk side can't really engage here. Now we have the old Mexican standoff. Sparrow on the high ground. Everybody else on the low. We've got Sereth arriving as well. Divish decides that he wants to go ham. He's going to jump right for the high ground. Faded Miracle pick picks up the buff. Gets a little bit of mana back for himself. But Divish has to be careful. Elmar, he's over on the side. Reforge has been popped. And goodbye, Greystone. He's going to fall immediately as well. Now Gideon has to get away amidst the Hail of Arrows. But it's not going to happen. And the arrows will shred him to pieces over in the river. Chimera decides that he wants a little bit of this boot. Hey. But I don't think he's actually going to be able to get it. We've got a, th a strong trio of independent females on the mid lane. And I don't think this is something that Chimera is going to want to mess with. Flytrap onto him. Going to do some good damage. Deal coming in from the backstab. Could go onto the Fae. Could go onto the Countess. But he misses both of them. Absolutely insane. Faded Miracle goes in for the Shadow Slip. But will get quickly obliterated by the Revenant. But it doesn't matter because Tom Bone Breaker is still finding the kills in the mid lane. Finding the Chimera first. Looking for another one. Unstable, uncontable growth. Goes in from the Fae. Can they get anything else here? Revenant going forward with the Obliterate. But it's not really doing all that much right now. Sparrow's just hanging out in the jungle. She's going to be... Roasting some minions for now as this Mexican standoff continues in the mid lane. We've got towers going down across the map. Aurora doing a little bit of work. Haven't seen her for quite a while. She's going to find Eliamar inside the lane. Just going to sit there for some swag for a second. Nobody's killed Fangtooth at this point. We have seen a couple towers fall. And the Mexican standoff continues in the mid lane. Don't know how long this... Standoff is actually going to stay here for. Did we actually have some? No, that was a, an old kill notification. Again, apologies about this freezing, but that's just generally what happens when uh, we try to fix the replay bugs. Elias Mar still hanging out, trying to get some farm for himself. But Gideon said, or rather, Greystone says, No way, Jose, I'm not going to let you get that. Now, well, yes, going into the mid lane, trying to. Trying to find Faded Miracle, but we're not really seeing it here. It's an easy back it up from her. Meanwhile, Aurora will take the black buff away from the Dusk side, or at least she's trying to. Grayson's a bit slow to head over, and Aurora will be able to pick that up. So it's a nice little boon for the Dawn side to have, and may allow them to help out oh, quite a bit in mid. There's the Heresy. Used by Tom Bone Breaker, maybe a little bit preemptive, but they do have a bead on a couple of the people in the mid lane. JSR caught in the middle of the river. 
Uh, Horfrost is not going to find him. Neither will the Ascend. Trying to get the Chastise, but that's not going to hit as well. It's difficult for Tom Bonebreaker to get in here, but it might have been the bait that was needed. Rotten Rainbow, surely she has the Cryocism. Meanwhile, Faded Miracle has to get into the fight somehow. Tom Bonebreaker moving over to the side. Jaysar, he's definitely wanting to tank up a lot of this damage. He's going to leap on top of Faded Miracle, and the Feast will go on to the Chimera as well, taking him down. Black Coal is in the middle of the make way for the Greystone, and wow, that Shadow Slip is doing quite a bit of work. Gideon has basically nothing here except for a portal out, but he's not going to be able to get that off, and it turns into a 3 for 1 in the mid lane with Seal and Revenant still having to make their way out of the jungle. I don't think they can save their tier 1 tower here, but they may very well try. Steel Slam comes in, hits on the 2, but the tower's already down. Can the Revenant find anything? He's going to look for somebody low. Does he get it onto anything? Rotten Rainbow continues to go forward. Horfrost is put down, and the crowd system as well! It's going to do a heck of a lot of damage! He's going to... Oh! It's going to stun them all up. Aurora just goes for the ice skate to her death underneath the tower. That might not have been the best of decision thought she was in friendly territory but that was not the case but it doesn't really matter her team is doing a heck of a lot of damage to the tier 2 tower and the chimera can only do so much to try to defend it fade miracle quite low but he'll just throw another dark tide in and tell the chimera that she's got it handled Divish looks like he's being pretty aggressive here. He's gonna run right into those arrows. What is he doing right now? Sparrow is gonna definitely try to go for this damage, but Greystone doing what Greystone does. He's tanky enough to back away, and the rest of the Dawn side really didn't want to engage on that at all, even though they probably could have punished the Greystone a little bit there, but that might have very, very well been the bait that the Dusk side wanted. So nice back, very smart, very simple, and it gives them a chance to get some more objectives around the map, perhaps even take a Fangtooth. Kill Fangtooth for themselves. Couple buffs up. There's a stinging, a stinging orb. That c would definitely help the Dusk side take this down. Instead, they're going to go for it without. Dynage gets into the pit. Horfrost down from Rotten Rainbow. She's going to use the Glacial Charge to get out. The Shield Slam goes out on the two. Dynage is going to get caught in the middle of it, trying to avoid that that fang tooth but there's just too much damage in the pit and she most likely will go down here yeah with the revenant coming in from the backside she will fall but it's still a two for one can tom bonebreaker find anything on the backside she is going for the flank on this one it's gonna catch the gideon and revenant unawares she goes right for the gideon and he's gonna portal forward get the black hole off on the three is there any help here from the revenant he has to be so careful because the gideon is going to fall in just a couple seconds drops into the rock down and he dead boy tom bonebreaker coming on in Revenant goes for the reload, and he's walking back to backwards. You do not walk backwards against a Seraph, and she is going to mace him in the face and get another kill for the Dawn side. And probably find a green buff for herself. That's some easy survivability for the Seraph to get. Picks that up. Still no attempt onto the Fangtooth. Would probably be a nice little bit of power and gold for the Dawn side to get, but, you know, that's completely all right. We'll go ahead and fix some more of these bugs. We'd probably like to see the Dawn side go for more of the objectives since they very clearly have a pretty big advantage in this game. I mean, if you take a look at I haven't been looking at the cards too much. You try to cast and look at the cards at the same time because it ain't easy. 21,000 gold in favor of the Dawn side. And their levels are looking pretty good as well. I mean, that's a... Uh, the only person that's even close is the Sparrow and the Gideon and Chimera. Like, everybody else is above that level 10 mark. Divish trying to get away right now. We'll use the Assault the Gates to get to the low ground. We'll make it, but he gets his Reforge popped and eventually he dies. Eliosmar needs to get the Rift out of here, but the Feast is going to make it really difficult to get out of there and Faded Miracle 2 shots him with just the Dark, t side, the dark Tide and... The Feast. Faye getting into the action with the Flytrap on the two. They still want to go for Fangtooth. Kill Fangtooth. Jstar is getting some nice regen for it. Meanwhile, Zerdo is going to clean up the Faye. The Faye managed to get one kill onto the Steel. Now, can the rest of the team respond fast enough to get to the Fangtooth? But I don't think they will. Jstar has got some really good regen off of that one. And it was just a little bit too little too late for the Dawn side. They still want to try to get something off of this one, though. Dynage is going to chase Chimera. The bait has been laid. Dynage goes right on in. There's a lot of damage onto the Chimera. 
Sparrow stays alive, and Zerto oh, actually will find her with those last couple of Hellfire rounds, but I don't think Zerto's going to be so lucky to get out. Shadow Slip comes in. Shadow Slip gets the kill, and that's another one going to the Dawn side. They are cleaning house right now against Dusk. They've already got a Tier 2 tower down. They might have lost the first Fang Tooth of the game, but they're still doing quite excellent in uh, this match. Tom Bone Breaker, he's got eyes for the steal. It's looking pretty juicy right now. Starts swinging that mace wildly. Bonk comes through. There's three heroes arriving to that lane. That's going to be a pretty quick signal for the Seraph to get away and make sure that she doesn't get caught up in the thick of things. Aurora is here to help. How much do they want to catch here? Greystone. Oh, he might have had an idea about it. Horfrost is there. Black Hole goes out on the both of them. He should be doing some good damage to the uh, the Serith, but they both want to try to get some good damage down. Cryo comes on through. Tom Bone Breaker getting low, but Divish is getting stunned out right now, and he's got to be super careful. Steel comes in. That's a slam on the one, but not the one that he wanted to get. Rotten Rainbow has a lot of mobility to get away from here, but Zerto is coming in from the side. Serith. Really trying to do the most that she can against this one. Rotten Rainbow, oh, actually dies to that last little obliterate. You can't always run from the Revenant, especially when you got those red pellets chasing you. Divit shows up. Steel is pretty healthy right now. This isn't the best place for her to be, but meanwhile, there's still a Tier 2 tower that's gone down on the right side. So a kill goes to Dusk. A lot of kills go to the Dusk side. But still, we've got Countess on the Dawn side taking some objectives. Let's do the card thing right now. I haven't really talked about them too much this game. We've got the Pressure Hunter on a Sparrow. Got the Wound Seeker here for a Seraph. It's actually going to do some pretty good damage for her. And what do we have now on... Oh, Dynage goes for the Shatter Golem over the Pressure Hunter. Should definitely up her damage quite a bit. Meanwhile, Faded Miracle finds Zerto just randomly walking on the map. It's completely okay. Getting annihilated by the Countess here that we don't generally get to see as much anymore. Meanwhile, we've got the Fae versus Steel. Fight battles. Time for more Paragon. Fight night. Here we go. Pharaonix is going to force the Steel back a little bit. Steel? I would say that he's got the balls to go for this one. But he's just going to back up for now with the Aurora arriving to the fight. Meanwhile, Faded Miracle finding kills all over the place. Gets Eliamar down. That should be... Well, it could be the prime for them. I won't even say should be because they're going to have a bit of a difficult time taking this down with those projectiles coming in. And Greystone... Greystone, there's a prime going on right now. You can't ignore that one. Meanwhile, there's a fight going on in the mid lane. Rotten Rainbow facing up against two on his own. Sparrow's there as well. They might be able to clear out both. Cryosystem goes out. It's going to freeze down the Chimera. He can't swing those axes at all. And now Divish is fighting against two. The Sparrow Aurora combo completely cleaning up the Dusk side. And they'll pop the Reforge. They'll probably pop the Greystone as well. He jumps into the battle, trying to waste even more time. But that's not really the best time to be wasting. The Seraph died while trying to take the Prime Guardian, so uh, no purple buff. No purple buff for the Dawn side, but they will be able to get their first Fang Tooth of the game. Even while the Dawn side were losing to the Prime Guardian, just the Aurora and Sparrow were able to take a pretty good fight in the river and really choke off the Dusk side. It's really well done by them taking advantage of their gold lead and making sure that they don't let Dusk side into this game at all. Hail of Arrows goes down on the mid. We've got Dynage running right for the getting. He knows what he wants, and he definitely wants to get it. Revenant's putting some good damage in there, though, and the Aurora has basically abandoned the Sparrow at this point. Aurora's like, yeah, you have to initiate when I initiate. You're not really going to get any help from me otherwise. Zerto really wants to go for more here. I don't know if he just picked up a buff. Yeah, it's not really time for that. See if we can get this fixed. All right, we got the Revenant fixed now. Take a look at our cards. We've got the Yomi Garden here up for Steel. This should allow him to be quite tanky along with his ablative armor. Also have a Veil Stepper on Chimera. That's not bad. Shadow Dancer for a Countess. Should allow her to get quite a bit down. Here comes the Steel though. He's going to be able to take down a tower. Goes for the Steel Slam onto the Sparrow. Will be able to find her and the Bonk doing quite a bit of damage. They'll clean up the DPS 
of the Dawn side, but is it going to be enough? Tom Bonebreaker caught in the black hole. They're going to get the bunk on top of the Serith as well. She'll use the Heaven's Fury. Can she take, or the Heresy rather, she wants to get a kill here, getting them quite well, but the Fire Trap hits on the three. The Cryos there as well. Gideon will get just shattered to pieces after that one. And the Dawn side at least managed to find something after they have a tower taken away from them. Can they do anything else on the map? But we've got a Greystone pushing down the left lane, and Faded Miracle is quickly going over to take care of that one. Divish. We'll run up a little bit, but Faded Miracle is here right now. Chimera obviously wants to get into this fight. It would be a 2v1. Can the Countess handle it? Is level 18 up against the level 13 and 11 of the Chimera and Greystone, respectively. Faded Miracle's got the minion advantage, and Divish jumps right into the tower. He's got to be careful there. That's way too aggressive from him, and he's going to back away. Shadow Slip double... A Dark Tide onto Jay Sara. Faded Miracle just getting that harass damage out right now, but she is getting a little bit of help. Might be time to engage. You also have that Shadow Dancer. It's the Shadow Slip. Dark Tide out onto Jay Sara. He's trying to go for the swipes, but he's surrounded by three, and the Feast will very quickly assure his demise here on the left lane. That was, again, the Chimera. I mean, it's just kind of the design of the hero, I guess. You can get in, but you don't get out, and I guess he's cos cosplaying as much as he can. He's playing a Chimera, always going in, never going out, and uh, I have to say, he's going to make a lot of children like that. Going to give a lot of people his Chimera DNA, and I don't know how I feel about that. In any case, Fangtooth will be on the menu once again for the Dawn side. This will be their second one of the game. Faye comes on in and uh, puts as much damage as she can. The Dark Tide of Faded Miracle will finish it off. So it's going to be another one going over to the Dawn side. A little bit more power for them. And Tom Bone Breaker, it's like he has a vendetta against the Prime Guardian right now. He's already setting up for it. He wants to make sure that his team gets that buff. Looking for a black buff. Give him a little bit more damage and, uh, well, give him a little bit more vision. But actually, he doesn't care about the Prime Guard. He wants to go for the kills. Zerdo in the mid lane has a green buff, and Tom Bone Breaker wants to break that one. Gets the green buff off of him, looking for a little bit more. Has to get the Ascend over. Is going to stay tight to Zerdo, and he's not getting any help here at all. Look how fast that may swings! And uh, that Heaven's Fury and Heresy is going to be more than enough to take him down. Tom Bone Breaker, however, he's going to get punished for it. The Fly Trap hits on the two again, though. The AoE damage is just so immense from the Dawn side, and that's going to allow them to take two call it three here on the mid lane and possibly find it in hit for themselves they are prime guardian buffed up right now and they're looking pretty meaty as well waiting on the low ground graystone looking to find anything that he can do but rotten rainbow is just going to ride that ice right on out to the top and it's also going to create a path for dynage as well david divish will get out but the inhibitor is in a lot of danger with rotten rainbow just smacking it down with the sword, gets the Horfrost down, and Divish walks right on into it. That's not what you want to be doing as a Greystone. And very quickly after the Reforged, he will fall after he doesn't have the Storm the Gates at all. Rotten Rainbow, again, smells more blood on the mid lane. He wants to get that sword sated right now. And I don't think he's going to have to wait too long either. Eliasmar needs to get the Black Hole to end all Black Holes right here. Will he do so? Revenant getting into the fight. A little bit too far up. The inhibs down. They're going in. Well, yes, gets a steel slam to the backside, but it's not really going to hit onto too much at all. He's going to quickly fall. Feast not even needed to kill him. He was already dead. Stop. He's already dead. You're killing him too much. Fly trap cry on to two. This combo from the Dawn side is way too much for the dust to handle, and that should just about be all she wrote here in this Paragon pub match. Dynish is even going to put down a little bit of swag here on the lane as his minions rush into the core. They want to try to go for the three in hit slam. Doesn't matter. The surrender button has been hit, and that will be it. Dawn's side taking the W here versus a uh, rather <laughs> a rather bruised and battered Dusk side. Take a look at the last cards here. Honestly, that was just... Domination from the beginning, 44 to 16 in terms of the kills. We had a 43, 44,000 gold lead towards the end of it. 17 and 1 on the Countess. That's what they like to call going ham. Fade Miracle really putting in a 
a good game there and I think this was really a team effort. They worked really well together as a team. Their AoE comp was uh, pretty strong. And look at all those strong, independent females beating up the big, dirty men. So uh, <laughs> I guess that's going to be it. What a, a good match. Thank you for submitting this one, Faded Miracle. If you have any games that you just might like to have casted, I would love to see them do a little bit of practice myself. So if you would like to have your game casted by yours truly or someone else, maybe as a gift, as it is the, the giving season, go ahead and uh, check out my Twitter at Pathing Legume or twitch.tv slash Pathing Legume. You can DM me, whisper me, check me on Discord. You can do whatever you like to try to get in contact with me to get me to cast your game because I definitely would like to do that. So thanks for watching. Thank you to Fade Miracle for submitting the game. And I'll see you all on the flip side.